Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Abyss and in today's video I'm going to be going over my beloved DOT Queen Kafka. Kafka is a lightning unit following the path of nihility. She applies shock and detonates all dot and she's just a unit that ages like a fine wine. If you've been around the channel for a while you may have picked up on the fact that I like Kafka a little bit more than other people but rest assured this guide is as objective as possible and it's made solely just to help you guys make the most use of your jades and your time and if you do find this video helpful a like is appreciated and subscribe if you want to see more. With that out of the way let's get into it. Starting off with her value to your account. So for the relatively early game players she's a solid pickup that isn't too hard to build. Building attack is much easier than something like crit and you also have quite a few options in terms of useful light cones. For those of you around the mid game or just free to play, she's again a really good pickup. Dot has yet to really struggle with any content, it even ignores like shield mechanics and just a strong damage dealer in general. If you are at end game already and you're clearing it, you may not need a Dot team, however if you do want to invest in Dot it is certainly worth it and she is that core component for a Dot team. She can clear pretty much any end game content with even an average build and shows no sign of really being replaced and whenever stronger or better Dot units do come out, she will only get stronger. Overall, I would give Kafka a strong 9 out of 10 in terms of value. She's a unit in theory that cannot be power crept. Great damage output, frequent dot application, and just reliability across the board is just so nice to have. She's also the hottest character in the game, so. Moving on to her traces. For trace priority, you're gonna wanna focus on alt and skill. After that, the talent, and then you can level up the basic attack too if you want. She does deserve it, you know, best character in the game, even if you're never gonna be using it. As for what they do, the basic attack is very simple, just a small amount of damage to a single target. Then we've got the skill, blast attack, dealing damage to three enemies, and will trigger dot on the selected enemy to do extra damage. This is what you'll be spamming in battle. Next is her ult, does damage to all enemies on the field, applies shock, and after you unlock her A2 trace node, it will trigger any dot that is applied to any enemy it hits. Up next is her talent, so once per turn, whenever another teammate uses a basic attack, Kafka will launch a follow up that inflicts shock and it also does a little bit of lightning damage. Lastly is her technique, whenever you activate it, it instantly attacks, deals AOE lightning damage to every enemy and inflicts shock to all enemies as well. Onto the trace nodes, I did mention the A2 early in the ult section, but essentially when you've unlocked it, as soon as Kafka does ult, it will trigger every dot that is applied to the enemy it hits. Her A4 gives her an extra 5 energy whenever any enemy that still has shock is defeated. And lastly is the A6, this increases the base transfer ult, follow up and technique to apply shock. If you're wondering how to play her, it's not too difficult. She's another one of those units where you just spam skill. The only thing you really need to pay attention to is the timing of her ult, which isn't too tricky again. You just want to make sure that the enemies have enough dot and you're not wasting energy by keeping the ult for too long. It's just about finding that balance. Now for what everyone loves and hates, we've got the relics. Before I get too far into it, I do want to make a little section for everyone who's really early on into the game. So for those of you without too many options, here are two that you will probably use the most. First up, we've got four piece musketeer. This will offer an attack and it will offer a speed boost. You won't make use of the basic attack buff, but the other two effects are pretty useful. Another option you may want to try is Two Piece Musketeer with Two Piece Thief. Two Piece Musketeer will give you that attack buff, and the Two Piece Thief set will give you a break effect buff. There is something called break effect dot or break dot, so upon breaking an enemy, you will apply break dot. Unlike regular dot, this goes off of their character level and their break effect. Once you do develop your account a bit more, it's less valuable to go for the break effect dot and it's more valuable just to go for regular dot. Once you do have some more options, 4-piece prisoner is going to be the best in slot, the 2-piece gives her a 12% attack buff, and then the 4-piece gives her a further 6% death ignore per stack of dot. So that's up to 18%. Once you get a proper dot team, this will have full uptime. This set is also more effective to farm, and it's the best in slot for other dot units too. If you either haven't unlocked the prisoner set just yet, or you don't have enough for a full 4-piece, I have some temporary options for you. However, let me clarify that these are sets that you should not be farming with Kafka in mind. They're just sets that you can try using if you have those pieces lying around. So any mix of an attack buffing set, so Musketeer, Prisoner, Valorous, those are all fine. Dot does scale with attack, so having attack percent really is ideal. However, speed is also important on Kafka, so maybe you do want to opt for hack space 2-piece. And for the final two sets I want to mention, which are just going to be 2-piece combos that you can have, you can use the 2-piece Sizzling Thunder, which gives her a lightning damage boost, and then the two-piece Pioneer set, which lets her do more damage to debuffed enemies. For her planner ornaments, you don't have as much flexibility here. Glamoth is the best in slot, offering a 12% attack and a 12-18% to damage buff depending on her speed. For the early game, or just in general if you have these pieces, you can use the Space Ceiling Station set. A typical Kafka build will be over 120 speed, so you'll be getting an extra 24% attack. Both sets are fine for her, however, Glamoth offers around 4-5% more damage than Space Ceiling Station. Glamoth is actually more useful to farm as well, because it's used on more units, and it's stronger on more units. For the main stats, for the body you're going to want attack percent, for the boots you want speed, for your orb you can pick between lightning damage or attack percent and then for the rope you'll want attack percent as well. Now for the stat checkpoints. So for your HP you'll want around 3k or higher, for your defense around 1k, 
then for your attack you want at least 3.5k for an end game build. For effect hit rate, aim for around 28%. This guarantees landing shock on any enemy even if they have resistance to it. I do want to mention that she does get 18% through traces alone, so don't worry too much in terms of substats. Lastly is her speed, if you're running Glamoth you'll want to aim for 135, but in general you do want her a bit faster, in the 140s is usually good, and if you can reach higher whilst not sacrificing any other stats then that's perfect. Substats to aim for is speed, effect hit rate, attack percent, and break effect is alright, but it's not too necessary. For her light cones, her signature light cone is obviously her best in slot. At S1, it gives her damage buffs, it also provides her with up to 14.4% speed. The light cone also adds another debuff to enemies whenever she attacks them, which is a road. You can think of this as just another stack of shock. The other 5 star option is solitary healing, which is the hurt store one. This light cone provides her with break effect, and it increases her dot damage for 2 turns after she ults. If Kafka applies the DOT to an enemy and they die, Kafka gets a bit of energy from that too. However, whilst this is a good option, there are some 4 stars that are better for her, and this way you can run this light cone on your other dot character in the same team. So the best 4 star option is Good Night Sleep Well, which you can get from pulling. If you have this at S4 or S5, I would recommend skipping out on her signature light cone. The damage difference really isn't that big. As for what the light cone does, for every debuff on an enemy, the user's damage increases by a certain percentage, and this stacks up to 3 times. This damage buff does apply to Dot as well. Eyes of the Prey is another light cone you may have picked up from pulling, and it is her third best, provided you have it at S5. It increases her effect hit rate, which means you don't need to have it on any subsets anymore, and increases her Dot damage by up to 48%, again, at S5. The last option I have for you guys is the one that is available from the Forgotten Hall store, and that is Formata. It offers her break effect, and increases the wearer's damage to enemies with wind shear or shock applied to them. Solid light cone, and easy to get full uptime on it, and it can perform slightly better than solitary healing. In the case that you don't have any of these at S5, typically good night sleep well still outperforms the rest even at S1, but at that stage I would say just pick whatever light cone offers you the best stats that you need. If you're missing out on some of the checkpoints I mentioned earlier, maybe pick one that can, you know, alleviate that worry. Next up we've got the teams and synergies. So a typical Kafka team comp will have one other dot unit, then a support, and then a sustain. For the dot slot, Black Swan ranks number one, regardless of any enemy weakness, these two on the same team are a force to be reckoned with. For the rest of the dot units, just pick whatever matches whatever type weakness the enemy has. For fire weak enemies, you can pick either Gwenaifen or Jiao Cho. For wind weak enemies, Sampo is obviously going to be your best choice if you don't have Black Swan. And then for physical, you can go for Luca. But again, I just leave it down to your preference or whatever you have, and just pick them based on enemy weakness as well. I will mention that physical dot, which is bleed is the highest dot in the game, but this doesn't make Luca the best option all the time. In all honesty, Sampo will probably be the most frequent option for you, with the best coverage. For the supports, your main ones are going to be either Ron, May, or Robin, depending on who you have. If you have both, Robin can be a slightly better option, since she has the advanced forward and the attack buff. With Robin, Dot actually activates faster as well, since the enemy isn't delayed as much. However, these two options are both quite expensive, so for some 4 star options, you can use either Pella or Asta. Pella applies death shred to enemies, which allows Dot to do more damage, whereas Asta buffs the the team's attack and speed, which allows your dot characters to do more damage anyway. Then lastly for your sustain slot, Hoho is the only one really worth mentioning. She provides attack and she gives energy regen, which makes her more useful compared to any other sustain. However, any sustain is fine. All they need to do is keep the team alive, and if they're doing that, all is good. On to Kafka's Eidolon. So E1 affects her talent, so whenever her talent does trigger, she can increase the dot received by the enemy attack by 30% for 2 turns. Her E2 increases all allies dot damage by 25%. Then for her E4, when an enemy takes shock damage inflicted by Kafka, she regenerates 2 energy. Lastly is her E6, so shock inflicted by Kafka's ult talent or technique increases in damage and lasts an extra turn. A good stopping point is E6 because honestly it's worth it, she's Kafka, she's the best unit in the game and I really can't imagine why you wouldn't go all in. Okay fine, E6 isn't worth it, E0 is more than enough, but if you do want to go for more dot focused teams, especially now and in the future, E1 and E2 genuinely make it smooth sailing. And she isn't the best unit to go for in terms of full like vertical investment, but she really isn't a bad one to go for. As usual, I do the E1 S1 debate and I think S1 would be my recommendation. The speed, damage and additional debuff, which is a road, makes it worth it. This isn't to say that E1 isn't worth it, it's still pretty good, but especially if you're short on light cones and your other dot units might need it, the sense of comfort that S1 brings is definitely worth the value. Jokes aside, I do think she is a really good unit. It's so rare to get a damage dealing unit that is practically immune to power creep, so it is something I would recommend you keep in mind. But either way, that does it for today's video. If you did enjoy it or found it useful, please do leave a like, it does help me out a ton, and subscribe if you do want to see more. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, I'll try and answer all of them, or you can join the Discord, I'm a bit more active there, and you're welcome to join just to join the community. Thanks so much for watching, and hopefully I can catch you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>